I mean, an easy grilling vegetable is zucchini, asparagus, eggplant. Those, those three are okay. great on the grill. Oh, see, I was going, I was going a little more, a little bit more bougie with it. I was like, grill some escarole and make a vinaigrette and pour it over the top. Hi, I'm El Simone. Hi, I'm Laman Johnson. And you're here for another episode of Ask ATK. For the questions today, El, I heard that you asked your fans on Instagram to send us some questions. Sure did, and they sent a lot of really good questions. Um, I'm gonna fire them off, and you're gonna help me answer them as best we can, right? I sure am, I'm gonna try. All right, you better. <laughs> Leah Blake wants to know, Leah Blake 7610, she says, what spice is a must have in your pantry? What's your must have spice? Um, I mean, this might sound super simple, but I love pepper. I'm a huge pepper fan. Uh, you know, I put it on everything. I didn't um, know that. And I also love red pepper flakes. So I don't know if that, counts as a spice it's not it's not too exciting I but does. i love it on everything as a spice it counts um i don't know if my my choosing counts i like hot sauce like on everything <laughs> like in a little hot sauce here and there put it in sauces i you know that's probably um my go-to especially because because i don't like dealing with like cooking hot foods for me, it's a great way to add heat without actually having a hot item. So I really like to have, and I also like a variety of hot sauces, you know, like okay. I love having like some crystals or red hot. I, I think it's pretty cool to collect hot sauces from my travels. What about um, sriracha? Uh, oh, sriracha is a must have. I, okay. I don't even, that you shouldn't have even asked that. Like that's, that's, uh, just, uh, that's a regular uh, condiment, like, like sugar, milk, sriracha. I was just, just checking, just checking. <laughs> All right. Lakila Brown wants to know what are we eating for the summer? She would love some recommendations. Um, I'm eating a lot of summer salads. I don't like to turn my oven on in the summer. So I'm like loving all the grains like quinoa, couscous and like, I get a lot of vegetables in my CSA box, so I have a lot of things that I can, you know, mix and mash with. Um, so those are kind of my summer go-to. They're easy. You can cook them ahead of time. You can make mm -hmm. a variety of toppings, kind of like our bowls book, all about bowls. Is that the name of the book, Laman? Is that the name of our bowls book? Um, bowls. I think it's just bowls. It's just bowls, right? Lots of bowl so. um, offerings in that book. So I kind of refer to that book when I want some ideas. What about you, Laman? What are you making this summer? Um, being a New Englander, I'm loving lobster rolls, fried clams, um, a little healthier. Um, I'm grilling asparagus, uh, zucchini, summer squash, and of course, burgers and dogs for my son. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. I have not been invited over for burger or dog, but that's fine. Um, <laughs> okay, let's see. Michelle Ann Campbell says, what food signals the changing of seasons for you two? Um, for me, it's ramps. When I see ramps, I know that the season is changing. Like ramp is the first sign in my opinion that like spring summer is here yep um right. yeah what about you uh I would, I would agree with ramps um pumpkins any kind of like butternut squash falls coming um apples apple picking um i love apple pie um strawberries rhubarb Strawberry rhubarb is one of my favorite pies, so that definitely lets me know the seasons are changing. Yeah, that's true. I have a good strawberry rhubarb crisp from Cook's, I think it's a Cook's Country recipe. I'm a little rusty. It might be a, it, it very well might be Cook's Illustrated, but um, yeah, I love a, a strawberry rhubarb. I, I am with you 100% on that. Um, yeah. 
All right. So Virgo Blue says, do you have a cooking bucket list filled with various recipes or a certain place, country or city you want to cook in? Um, what about, what about you, Johnson? What do you, what's your, your wish list to go, um, go to place? For me, it's kind of a cooking and vacation kind of bucket list. So I'm dying to go to Tahiti. Mm. And I would love to go there and just cook, you know, cook from the ingredients that are on the island, hang out in one of those, those huts and you know just go get off the grid i hear that that's a lot of fish really nice. you know a lot of a lot of fruit that, that would be my go-to that's a good one um i think i would really like to go to egypt also okay. vacation and cooking and um you know like all the spices um i i I bet there's probably like a, a market of spices that I could get that probably come from all over the continent of Africa. So it would probably be a great place to get, you know, more more than what I could find in one place. So that, yeah, that seems yeah. pretty exciting. Um, that's my bucket list. Um, I don't know that I have any particular recipes, Virgo Blue, but um, yeah, I'd say Egypt. I'll say Egypt. Sounds That's a good, good question. Thanks for asking. Okay. Naima D underscore BTV says, I live in Vermont and I was so excited to see people of color on the show. How have your experiences been from your childhood or heritage? What would you like to test on the show? Um, hmm. This is a really good question. Um, I've only had positive experiences working at ATK, and that's not to say that um, I'm not speaking for everyone. I'm def definitely speaking for myself. Uh, I think it's been, um, it's definitely been a learning curve because I have not been in corporate settings for a very long time. I was an entrepreneur for many years. So I think considering um, that I came from working for myself to working in a, a very structured corporate setting, um, it, it was better than I expected. Um, we're currently um, having some um, shifts in our work culture, which have been very positive. Um, I'm the inclusion leader, so I'm excited about that. And I wish I could say that it's all due to my leading, but it really is because um, we have like a really great group of people who work there who actually are taking incentive to make, um, you know, make our workplace better. So um, that's been great. Recipes from my childhood or heritage I would like to test on the show. Um, I don't know. Brian Roof covers a lot on Cook's Country. Uh, I don't know. Let me think on that, Lawman. What are your experiences at ATK if you want to touch on that or, you know, or any childhood or heritage recipes, maybe some um, New England classics? Hmm. I mean, yeah, as a, also as a New Englander, um, I've had nothing but positive experiences in New England, Boston, um, ATK. Um, as you said, as the inclusion leader, um, we're trying to put in some, in some, into place some things to, um, you know, increase the diversity in the company even more so. But um, as far as recipes, yeah, I'm not really sure. I mean, like you said, Brian Roof, has you know he's going all across the country grabbing from you know different areas and um you know um i think yeah he pretty I, I, he that's, covers that's a the gamut question. yeah and he, he covers he, the gamut quite well i mean I, th I feel like also whenever we're looking for new recipes they always ask us in house first if we have yeah. any heirloom recipe ideas so like we we kind of put them out there and for the most part they all get touched eventually i feel like so um that's a good yeah. question thank you naima d brujo sereno um these are all my favorite followers by the way i'm so happy they, <laughs> they chimed in with these questions um brujo wants to know what's our favorite lazy meal and favorite treat yourself meal dish Fish and, fish and grits or shrimp and grits, like anything with like a polenta grit. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Like it's so easy. You can make it. I mean, grits are a little involved, but like the, the shrimp 
can be done quite quickly and simply. And if you make enough, you can like have it repeatedly. <laughs> so it's both my favorite lazy meal and treat myself meal. I'm going to say bolognese because done right. It's, you know, it's a, it's a labor of love. And you, you know, when, when you put all that work into it, you got to make, you have to make enough for leftovers and freeze it. So then you just, you know, you heat it up and then cooking pasta is super easy. So. Is that, that's, that's your, um, treat yourself meal. Cause that ain't a lazy meal by any means. No, that, that's, that's a, that's a treat myself a meal. And then I make sure I make enough so that I have leftovers <laughs> that I can thaw So when out. you're lazy, you don't have to cook anything else. Exactly. Got it. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. Thanks, Brujo. Oh, Virgo Blue uh, had another really great question. Um, they said, what is one thing you have decided to never, ever eat again and why? I will never eat okra that is not fried. <laughs> I don't like okra that's stewed. It's slimy. It's gross. If I never ate it again, I, it wouldn't be too soon. I said it. Okay. I mean, I actually like okra fried. I love it in gumbo i don't mind the that texture of it i think it adds character to to the dish um i will i don't eat avocado which a lot of people think is a weird thing it makes me sick what and it's just something that i've tried it a bunch of times and i just can't eat it <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning a lot about you today. I did not, I didn't realize I've never seen you eat avocado. So you don't eat guac either? No. I'll taste it when I make it, but I can't, I can't ingest it. So. You're just as weird as I always thought you were. Dan Nappy Chicken wants to know what is one recipe that you do at home that you wish you could do on ATK? Hmm. That's a tough one. That is a tough one. Because I usually keep it pretty simple at home, which yeah. would mean that a lot of times that it would be too simple to really put together a recipe. Maybe it's, maybe it's just like, I would say tuna salad, but I'm pretty sure we have a recipe for that. Um, yeah. Grill, we have, I mean, we have recipes for grilled cheese. Those are all the simple things that I make at home that I'm pretty sure we have a recipe for. Oh, sorry. Uh, I make a nice, according to my son, I make the best butter cheese pasta dish. Mm. And he loves it, but it's so simple that I don't know that I would ever be developing it for ATK. I mean, it's, I think, four ingredients, so. It would be for people like us who can appreciate four ingredient dishes. You should. Right, may, I mean, I'm maybe open I'll to add, it. Maybe I'll add another ingredient and it'll find its way in our upcoming five ingredient recipe book i don't know don't you know don't mess with perfection if the kid says it's good it's probably good let's just let's try it or you can send me some and i will tell you how good it is or okay. not okay moya zb says "Ooh, what's something that you always make from scratch and then what's something you always get pre-made um, I always make my vinaigrettes from scratch. I will never buy a bottle of vinaigrette because I have always had whatever primary ingredients you need to make vinaigrette in the house. I've always had olive oil, I've always had vinegar, I always have multiple vinegars, I always have multiple alliums. So I always have like, mm -hmm. I have scallions, I have, um, you name it, like on all kind of onions. All, all of those things. I have everything you need. So I just feel like it's a waste of money to buy it. Okay. And also I only need such a small amount usually that it doesn't make sense to buy a whole bottle. Cause if I don't use it immediately, it's freshness goes away. It's just not worth it. Um, something I always get pre-made pasta. Even if I get fresh pasta, I get it already. I buy it from the store. I don't have time to make pasta. I mean, I do, but I don't. Okay. I just won't. Okay. But anyway, what about it? about you it's funny you say that because pasta is something that i will always buy whether it's fresh or, or dry i always buy pasta I, I'm, I'm with you i don't want to i know how to make it but i don't want to make it it's too much a mess 
with you know a lot of flour and yes you know the machine and all that kind of stuff but sauce I, I will always make my sauce whether it's bolognese marinara cheese sauce um whatever it is pesto that i'll take the time to make and if you're curious about how you can make all those things at home for yourself, you can also get our sauces book because it has all of the things we just mentioned in it. It's a really cute book. Yes. Um, and it's great when you have pasta and you're trying to figure out what to put on it or <laughs> salads and you're trying to figure out how to dress it. It's like a no brainer. Save yourself some time. Get the sauce book. Um, all right. Kubana Fit Nerd says, if you had to make baked mac and cheese for a lactose intolerant friend, what would you use to create that similar flavor and taste? Asking for me, not a friend. Um, I am currently kind of doing, I'm doing plant-based, you know, as my Instagram moniker says, mm -hmm. I'm um, a weekday vegan, weekend carnivore. I'm kind of like actually living up to that right now, um, completely without cheating. And, um, I use unsweetened coconut milk for a lot of things. I think of all the non-dairy milks to me, it has like the best, I don't know if, if viscosity is the best word to use. Like if it, it has a little thickness to it, like whole milk does. Um, and it doesn't have a, a very specific, it actually has a clean taste. Like the flavor of coconut in something when it's cooked is not distracting. It kind of blends well with a lot of other things, which is why I think people are quick to pair it with a cocktail, you know, yep. or put it, you know, put it in a cocktail. So I would say if you're looking to create like that bechamel and you're looking for something to replace the milk, I would say go with coconut milk. I don't know if, um, if you've had any other experiences, Lama. And I know lately the books team's been working on more, um, vegan or dairy-free or plant-based sorts of things, but uh -huh. that's my experience. Um, I have had the vegan mac and cheese that's in, a, in, in a, the vegan book that came out, I think, a few years back. Vegan for everybody. Now that, um, that mac and cheese was great. I'm not sure, I can't remember if the person that asked the question is actually vegan, but if they're just lactose intolerant, not vegan, a lot of, a lot of cheddar cheese is lactose free if you look on the back of the package it does say lactose free so you may be able to use that in the macaroni and cheese that's smart that's good that's a good idea all right kubana fit nerd um i look forward to seeing pictures of your lactose free mac and cheese um oh kelly m knox wants to know are there ever really as many people <laughs> buzzing around the kitchen as it shows in the intro? What's been the most fun experiment so far? Y'all are sneaking two questions into one question. I see what you're doing. Um, <laughs> okay, so yes, there are that many. It's way more actually, right, Lama? Wouldn't you agree? There's like way more people buzzing around ATK than what you see on camera because that's just yeah, like yeah some of the, the people, right? Yeah, because there's, we have three kitchens and a lot of times, depending on, you know, how crowded the kitchen is, if everybody that work, everybody that should be in the kitchen was in that one area, it would be intolerable. <laughs> it would be, yeah, it would be a nightmare. That's true. Um, what, well, what you see on TV are, um, the cooks who are making the food that supports the TV show while we're filming it. Um, and then there are cooks who are helping us um, back where we do the food styling for the TV show, which is happening, sim happening simultaneously. So we're mm -hmm. ha we have cooks doing that. We have cooks being food runners. Um, and that's just for the show. Like on a day-to-day -day basis, we have a whole business side of the company, you know, like our accounting team, our, the art directors, the, like, there's a whole other slew of people who may need to come into the kitchen for tastings. Like we actually scale back for TV. So it's, there's way more to answer your question. Um, and I think for me, the, the most fun experiment so far, 
We don't do a whole lot of experiments. That's kind of the science that goes behind the TV show. But I loved the experiment of what was, what was, Lawman, what was um, Joe Gitter jumping on with Dan Souza? They were doing, they did some science. What was he actually jumping on? I don't know what it was, but it was just it's, like Joe doing the physical representation of something while Dan funny. was like talking out the science. And it was, it's really it's educational, it but it's, it's it funny like, more it than like anything. It looked like slime. It looked like this kind of a it slime did. That, Maybe it was. <laughs> that kids make in camp. Yeah, that was pretty funny. I don't even, it was so funny that I don't even know what the message was. I was probably just laughing the whole time, but the, whatever that was, that was my favorite. Yeah, I just remember him running and staying up, and then once he stopped running, <laughs> kind of sank. He started falling. <laughs> right. Um, all right. Riri Nay RN wants to know: besides a kitchen knife, what is the one kitchen tool that each of you cannot live without? Thanks. What's your can't live without thing? Um, I love the bench scraper. I use it anytime I'm chopping onions or herbs, just to scoop stuff up, put it in a bowl. And I also love a really good wooden spoon. Oh, those are good tools. Um, I can't live without my graduated bowl set. Like I need to, I need to prep food at home. Usually the way I'm prepping food at work, like I need to have Yep. All my mise en place together and having my little graduated set of bowls helps me have like everything I need right there with me at one time. And, and it forces me to prep because sometimes I'll be like prepping as I'm cooking, which is never, never, ever a good idea. Um, no. Unless you maybe have made this recipe for like 10 years and you know how fast or how long it takes. But for me, I need to have everything ready all at one time so I can just stand at the stove and do the project. Um, I think it's pretty important to have, and I don't know if it's my favorite tool, but I think it's smart to just tell people if you have nonstick cookware, you should have like, um, like nylon or acrylic, you know, like some type of, um, non metal cooks tools to go with your, um, non metal cookware, right? Cause you don't want to scrape up your nonstick. So I think it's important to have like it sounds crazy and like like a little, uh, uh, you know, excessive to have two sets of tools. But if you want your nonstick cookware to last a long time, you should have tools just for those. So that's that's, that's, my, that's, that's why I love the wooden spoon. Right, because it goes with anything, right? Yeah. The only thing I don't like about the wooden spoon, though, is like sometimes it will take on the color of like if i'm cooking something with turmeric or curry right, right it'll turn my spoon a color do you have a um do you have like a secret lawman that you like wash it with or you know um, like to keep your spoons good the one that i've had that's been going i've had for quite a while is made out of um olive wood oh, like okay a, from like an like an olive tree mm-hmm and it's, oh, okay. it hasn't stained or anything. I guess I should go to, to um, um, our ATK review team, um, <laughs> better known as, or always known as tasting and testing. So I probably could find out which wooden spoon's good, but that's good to know. Olive wood, olive tree wood, wooden spoon. That makes sense. Okay, Lawman, I think we're coming up on our last question, so I'm going to make it an easy one um, so we can go out looking like superstars. Okay, sounds good. Um, <laughs> Foundry37 <laughs> wants to know, what is an easy veggie side dish for barbecue? No beans, please. Um, from, I mean, an easy grilling vegetable is zucchini, asparagus, Eggplant. Uh, yeah, those those three are okay. great on the grill. Oh, see, I was going, I was going a little more, a little bit more bougie with it. I was like, grill some escarole and make a vinaigrette and pour it over the top. I probably that's what I would do. Um, I don't really yeah. like yeah. A grilled Caesar salad too much. Yep, a grilled Caesar salad. Um, 
What else? I mean, even just like grilling some peppers, like having some peppers and onions grilled. Like I grill some onion rings because you can put it with any other thing, right? You can have yeah. it with your hot dogs. You can add it to something, you know, or with your meat, your steaks. Um, what else? I think I just, oh, I'm making some um, veggie kebabs. That way you can have several grilled vegetables all in one. Portobello mushrooms grilled great. Um, yep. yeah, those are, those are, those are great things. That was a great question. Foundry 37. Um, it's been really fun. You guys, those are really great questions. Um, I'm so glad that you took some time to send them in and that you got to meet, um, my work bestie Lawman. I finally <laughs> was able to get him to do a video with me. I mean, do a, do a Q and a question with me. Thanks Lawman. I appreciate it. This was fun. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Um, Thanks for you're asking welcome. me to join you. Oh, okay. this is just the beginning of a brand new thing. Uh, for more recipes and cooking tips, um, head over to americastestkitchen.com and we'll see you next time.